Hi, uh, welcome. Uh, this is uh, Rooney207. Uh, just wanted to uh, touch base uh, really quick on, uh, well, maybe not not as quickly as some of the other smaller videos, but I wanted to talk about the uh, Splinterlands um, update from the previous week for ending this uh, previous Monday. I noticed I um, forgot to uh, up upload this uh, video. And uh, this is... Uh, Let's see, the, the release, uh, the airdrop for Rift Watcher, the uh, ancient uh, Redwood one. I, it, uh, it recently came out there, and this is the uh, stats for uh, the, uh, the ancient Redwood. Looks, uh, looks like a, a pretty, uh, pretty strong card. I, I don't have um, any of the uh, Rift Watcher packs, so I think uh, what I'll have to do uh, eventually is to... Uh, start buying um, uh, some of these Riff Watcher cards uh, once I open up all the uh, Chaos Legion packs. I'm, I'm waiting to uh, get enough potions on um, uh, by the end of every uh, season. The uh, ancient. Um, um, so one of the things I uh, I love about the uh, the new uh, cards are that they come with these lures, and so um, the lures um, I, I think adds a um, a unique uh, proprietary um, intellectual property that I, I think uh, helps um, Splinterlands a lot, and I, I think it gives it that uh, additional um, touch and feel uh, for uh, relatability, and the uh, ancient. Um, Redwood, uh, his um, apparently he's like the father of the uh, forest, and his uh, legend begins uh, many many years ago. Um, uh, according to what uh, Nate and his team has written, he was the at one point was the only nut to fall from the uh, elder tree, and he took roots, and he eventually uh, kind of built up and. He um, used parts of him, his own uh, limbs and everything, to kind of uh, build the forest, and so that's kind of the uh, gist of um, the uh, ancient redwood uh, let's see here the um the uh, the other um uh, update that we have here um are the uh, let's see the n here for um this is for a uh, ruse and So for for Ruse, uh, it, it already came out, and I d uh, did a video on it. I I had 151 uh, BCX, and I did learn from um, others that have uh, commented on the video, and also from Bulldog's uh, video was that it's more efficient to do 25 um, at a time to be able to maximize the potential for the uh, gold uh, foil. So uh, that's something I'd like to try. Um, I haven't really uh, used uh, Ruse. Um, and I'm um, I'm kind of curious. I haven't gotten um, too many. I guess the the, the lower um, uh, mana matches that had um, enabled dragon. So I uh, look forward to uh, hopefully trying him out um, soon. But um, he, he looks like a pretty strong card, fast, um, and he's a dragon. There there aren't too many. I think he's the fifth of the uh, uh, dragon uh, summoner of his uh, his kind, and he's a uh, two mana, uh, which makes him. Um, much more uh, useful and uh, I don't think he's as good as uh, Archimus in terms of overall utility but um, because of his scarcity in terms of um, from a supply perspective he will most likely end up maintaining or retaining his position as the more expensive of the um, two promo cards that we have so far and I, I think it, it'll be good if the team can uh, release um, more frequently um, on I don't know if it has to be every quarter or things like that, maybe twice a year. But the, uh, I think this incentivizes um, players to stake their SPS, and it takes a little bit longer to unstake that. But um, I, I think uh, then SPS will kind of slide down a little bit temporarily. And But I, I think it, it'll help uh, to give um, SPS utility. There... There was the um, white paper that was released on LAN 1.5, The Secret of Praetoria. I'll um, kind of do a little bit more uh, detail on on that a aspect of it. Um, but the in terms of the town hall, uh, Matt and Aggie actually went through it. And I just wanted to kind of uh, summarize the, the high level 
um, pieces of the town hall. Essentially, um, there was an e the new energy system rework. So there was um, you're allowed one energy per hour, so a total of 24, and then maximum of 50 to hold. And then if you wanted to change um, any of um, the or or get additional um, energy would it would require depending on the league. So for for instance, uh, champion would be five hundred um, diamonds, one hundred fifty DEC, and then um, gold is fifty um, DEC. It's possible that um, the bronze league may um, there um, there may be a uh, an opportunity for for people to exploit it. Um, not quite sure, uh, but we'll we'll see what happens um, that. And then I think it, there may be use cases where someone may want to do it where on a daily basis they may be one or two um, battles short. So they'll try to kind of get the next chess and then for daily and then season may be reflected. And then I, I think um, on one of um, After Sounds, um, his his channel today um, Brandon did mention that he just enjoys playing so he he went and he spent a lot he was he's playing at champion one so he got a bunch of chess so that's a, that's an example of a player um, like Brandon or darkest night they'll they'll spend it and they'll they'll enjoy it um, so I, I think it's um, it seems like a, a good opportunity um, so uh, the the secret of Pretoria, um, Matt had mentioned that it's a um, MVP, a minimum viable product. Um, so there will be uh, future iterations. Um, he's working on LAN 2.0 white paper as um, I'm pr uh, talking about it. Um, there, uh, Rooney benefits will be reflected in the uh, Splinterlands marketing value. So I, I think uh, over time, um, Matt and the Splinterlands team will continue to reiterate and push uh, Rooney's value and uh, benefits. Uh, so ho hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see uh, Rooney's uh, price continue to, uh, to improve um, slowly over time. The uh, card rental delegation, that's, um, it'll be uh, usable on LAN, um, I, I believe. And then the, the LAN plot rentable um, feature will be available in LAN 2.0. The uh, castle plot uh, should be able to tax keeps on its own plot. Uh, that's a future state. Um, the other future state is that uh, non-land owners can participate. And then there's uh, there will be uh, voucher sinks in uh, future states uh, as well. And I can go over the uh, land white paper a little bit. I, I think um, a, a Jumpy uh, RB is going to uh, publish a, a Peak D uh, article. I, I can go over her. She had shared with me. Uh, some of her uh, write-ups as well in terms of um, so also the other thing is the uh, soul keep uh, closed beta will be live for players that have purchased 500 plus packs and that's uh, been uh, recently announced here and let me see if I can try to um, get to the other uh, uh, let's see here let me Try to um, get to. I think this is yep. This is Jumpy's. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, uh, Jumpy RB, she uh, she kind of wrote a summary and some some of her, and she'll publish this in her uh, Peak D, and this is just a quick high level uh, summary of um, what she gathered out of the uh, LAN 1.5 um, white paper. So she's uh, she's looking for uh, some kind of um, what are the elements that are needed to generate a. Um, uh, the output and then how much time will it take to generate uh, output with minimum elements what can be produced and those are her um, top three questions and in terms of the uh, output there are uh, the task piece the praetoria research sps mining uh, farming produce uh, grain tokens uh, totem fragments and uh, rooney will be able to gather um, for, um, totem fragment a, as well. So there's going to be um, additional use cases. 10% tax collected by castle and keeps. Uh, production output elements, um, production point terrain preferences, production boost. Those are some of the um, 
items that's covered there and then she uh, laid out the uh, production generating elements the uh, kind of a minimum piece for the number for a, la a single land plots how many cards they're like five power source um, and then there's Rooney would be able to act as a power source as well and then the the number of food that's produced the estimated cost so she laid out some of the projected costs of the current land plot um, it's I think it's come down from the 145 range and it may come down once everything has been surveyed and uh, things like that um, and then the the total um, uh, DEC that's needed I, I think uh, probably players will probably spend somewhere in the range of 50,000 to 75,000 DEC potentially um, on their land and then uh, clearing the uh, plot takes approximately 12 days with minimal elements uh, and these are subject to change once uh, land 2.0. Uh, I think uh, she'll uh, update that, and uh, if she's okay with it, maybe I can share with you on her her update for land 2.0 as well. From the land structure, land territories, there are seven. There are 150 regions with 20 to 22 uh, average um, per territory, um, 150,000 land plots, 1,000 uh, per region, and organized by 10 tracks, 100 each within each region. The land deed attributes uh, claim uh, plot reveals, and these are uh, territory, regions, plot, um, tracks, and plots. Uh, survey plot reveals uh, other attributes. It could be the terrain, rarity, resource type, castles, and keeps. And um, of course, if you have a region, you're guaranteed um, one castle and nine keeps. Uh, starter pa uh, packages that will be available after this coming Tuesday's uh, update is uh, building in a box, the uh, landbound uh, time vault um, that's not landbound, and the unstable uh, totem that is also landbound. So I, I think a, a lot of these uh, ones that uh, they're uh, they're pretty useful, and if you wanted it to accelerate uh, some of your land development, I think they're very helpful. Uh, something to uh, to consider. Um, Let's see. I think uh, that's pretty much it for um, for this video on the uh, latest uh, up update uh, from this coming uh, this previous Monday. And hopefully, I'll be able to uh, remember to do these weekly updates. And I'll talk to you later. Thank you.